welcome back to my channel it's your girl you let me buy back with another video if this is your first time of stopping by you are most definitely welcome please do well to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you get notified whenever i upload a new video i'm a Cameroonian youtuber and i'm based in kumasi ghana and i'm out here creating amazing amazing content for you i know you guys are going to love this video i've been getting a lot of questions about um living in ghana studying in ghana how i got admission into Kwame Kumar university and all of that so in today's video i'll be answering all your questions i'll be giving you guys some tips and um, everything you need to know everything you should expect when coming to study in ghana so there's so much to talk about there's a lot of information i have to give you guys and i don't want the information to get mixed up so i've decided to record the video in parts in the first part i'll be talking about the application process next i'll be talking about visa application then the third point is going to be accommodation i'll be talking about the social life that's living in ghana cost of living you know schooling and all that good stuff and lastly i'll be telling you guys if the borders are open or not because given the current circumstances a lot of people are so confused this video is going to be very long but informative information is never useless okay it can be of help to i don't know your niece your nephew your neighbor whoever so just keep watching okay missions are currently ongoing and i'm just going to tell you guys how to apply what do you need to apply to the Kwame Kumar University of Science and Technology. KSC has an admission portal and all you need to do is to create an account with your name, your email address and your password and then they are going to give you a login pin. You have to guard that pin jealously because if you lose it, you cannot restart the application process with another account, okay? The whole application process is in part. You'll be required to fill in certain information based on your educational background, personal information, family information, community service and leadership skills. Also, you'll be required to upload documents like your ordinary level and advanced level certificates for those in Cameroon, which is equivalent to the WASI in West African countries like Nigeria, Ghana, and Gambia. The application requirements will differ depending on what you're applying for. So you will need a bank statement. Also, you need to pay an application fee of 150 US dollars. The next thing you're going to need is a personal statement. So in your personal statement, you're required to state why you want to study in the school you are applying into. I'm coming to study in KNUST because maybe um it's conducive for learning. I want to have another experience out of my country. Um, maybe the facilities are better. And then you also have to state what you are going to do for your country when you leave KST. So with the knowledge attained from this school, I'll go back to my country and maybe as an engineer, I'm going to work on the roads as a pharmacist. I'm going to help improve the health sector. There are a lot of sample personal statements on the internet. You should check it out also you're supposed to give academic references it's basically presenting a teacher their name their email address so that if need be they can contact the teacher and the teacher can confirm that you studied in the school most people give the names of their principals school masters but you have to seek the person's consent first before putting the name in that document so basically that is what an academic reference is and for every school that you mention you have to provide an academic reference okay so a lot of people ask about agents you know in KNUST there are no agents the only way to apply is through the portal agents cannot help you out just go to the portal they have made the admission process as simple as it can be so follow the instructions and it's going to be easy if you cannot understand it you can ask a friend and auntie and uncle your mom your dad to help you with the process okay because here we don't have agents that can help you with all of that stuff when choosing a course option you have to take into consideration the subjects and the courses that you really have interest in 
also you have to bear in mind your present skills and capabilities um you have to do your research okay do your homework and understand the course that you are selecting i rushed into getting pharmacy and it later dawned on me that this is a six-year course and i wasn't sure if i wanted to stay in school for that long so it's good to take your time and make the right choice <music> frequently asked question is when is the admission list published normally the admission list is published at the end of august yes normally that's when it's published but for now nobody is certain we're going to be talking about scholarships so today i'll be talking about the mastercard scholarship which is simply a scholarship for the underprivileged students who attain a certain level of academic excellence so they have a criteria for all of that. First of all, you have to show proof of your inability to sponsor yourself. With this scholarship, priority is given to females, people with disabilities, and displaced people. Displaced people will include refugees, um, orphans, homeless people. You cannot apply for the MasterCard scholarship awaiting your ordinary, sorry, awaiting your advanced level results, okay? You're supposed to have had your results because they have to know how you performed. Normally, the MasterCard scholarship is open between January to the 1st of May, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the deadline was extended to the 3rd of July, which just passed and i want to sincerely apologize for not recording this video earlier but i'll leave the link below you can check it out and start getting your things ready for next year so generally the the pay for your tuition and then they offer counseling services and also they give you opportunities to participate in leadership congresses and a lot of other cool stuff what will you need to present at the airport you need a passport a yellow card and a provisional admission letter given by the school. The yellow card is simply a certificate of vaccination issued by the WHO, that's the World Health Organization, and it is used internationally. Moving on to the provisional admission letter. This is a document given to you by the school upon admission pending the original admission letter. It contains your ID card number, admission number, the course you're studying and its duration. Also, it gives you information about your school fee details and the deadline for payment. At the airport, you'll be required to show a receipt of your fee payment. It's just a way of making sure that you're actually intentional about going to go and study in the school you're going to the visa countries like nigeria kenya togo south africa and the like do not require visas to study in ghana but other countries like cameroon for example require a visa and we do not have a ghanaian embassy in cameroon so we get our visas upon arrival usually the visa fee is 130 us dollars other countries that require visas but have the Ghanaian embassies in their country usually apply for their visas before coming to Ghana. For those who get their visas upon arrival, you are issued a 30 days visa and you are expected to have processed your resident permit before the 30 days are over. To process the resident permit, all you need to do is go to the main administration and they are going to give you information on how to go about that. Also, there's an international student association that assist students with formalities like this. Before coming to Ghana, if you have contacts in Ghana, it's going to be really helpful. It's way easier if you have somebody who comes to pick you up. You arrive at the Kotoka International Airport, Accra, and KNSC is in Kumasi. At the airport, the airport taxes are so expensive, so it's advisable that when you get there, just get an Uber instead of getting an airport taxi. You need to take a cab from the airport to the bus stop, which is at Seco, and board a bus to Kumasi. Ask to be dropped off at Tech Junction. From Tech Junction, you're going to get a cab that is going to take you to campus. About accommodation, the university provides accommodation for international students on campus, and this is known as the GUSS hostel. I've never really known what that means, but yeah, it's on campus, and there are various accommodation options. Accommodation fees range between 1,200 US dollars to 1,300 US dollars. 
it's advisable to book a room before coming to Ghana. So once you arrive, you meet the hostel manager and the porters, get your room keys and you settle in. Now let's talk about the accommodation options. In the girls hostel, you don't have the one in the room option, okay? So either way, you're going to get a roommate. There's an option for two in the room and the two in the room is just you, your roommate and both of you share a bathroom and a balcony that you can turn into the kitchen. Also, you have the two in two option. So for the two in two option, you have a roommate and you're just two of you in the room. But in the adjacent room, there are two other people and then all four of you share a bathroom. So on campus, the school provides free buses that transport students from the hostel to the faculty and back. Each student is provided with a bed, a mattress and a pillow. So you need to go to the market to get other provisions like your fridge, a microwave if you need one. The hostel provides free water, free electricity and free wi-fi let's talk about off-campus accommodation it's usually further away from the faculty but then it's cheaper and some hostels off campus provide free transportation but some don't comparing off k to campus off campus you have to take care of your light bills your water bills your transportation you know there's just a lot more expenses as a first time student our advice is to stay on campus because on campus there is um, a little more comfort than you find off key because number one is very close to the faculty then there are free buses that take you to and from the faculty and um, you stay with other international students around you so you can easily interact and get to discover things you know meet people make friends and all of that also there are shops on campus where you can get basically everything and anything that you will need next is living in Ghana so under living in Ghana, I'm going to talk about the people, the language barrier, I'm going to talk about studies and um, cost of living. Generally, Ghanaians are very welcoming and they're always willing to help. So you really find it easy living in Ghana. Ghanaians are very smart and book conscious. They are very smart, like they will give you pressure. <laughs> You will feel like you're wasting your parents' dollars in school. It'd be nice to make friends with them. They're interesting people. You could learn three. I'm going to be talking about the language barrier. Unlike in Cameroon, where different tribes have different dialects, in Ghana, the Ashanti people speak in three. So you might face this challenge when you're going to the market to buy stuff, when you're going to braid your hair, when you're taking an Uber, like, you know, everywhere. There are some churches that don't don't preach in English. So even the ones that speak in English, they, they crack jokes in three. It's actually a challenge, but then you will live with it. Another Most challenge is the food difference. Food is quite different. I think for the Nigerians and Cameroonians, we have similar dishes. So if you're coming from Cameroon, you're not going to find fufukon and jamanjama here. You're not going to find dole and all those things are too cocky. Those of you coming from Nigeria, you're not going to find moi moi, afang, you know. They don't have all of that in Ghana. I recorded a country tag video a few months back and I talked a lot about the challenges I face here in Ghana so you can check that out to know more next thing I'm going to talk about is the studying I really enjoy studying in Ghana I love the educational system so much but one of the challenges I faced was their accent Ghanaians they pronounce really differently for my first month in Ghana, I was not understanding what the lecture was saying. Imagine studying anatomy which is already something on its own like and then your lecturer is pronouncing things, things up on the in the body that you don't know. Like the whole thing was so confusing. Like most of the time I found myself asking, oh what did the lecturer say? What did the lecturer say? I didn't even think notes in class. It was so difficult to follow up. Um yeah so studying in Ghana is a wonderful experience. I really love it here. I'm sure you guys can tell because I'm always talking about my school, talking about my school. If there's anybody who is looking to study here, I highly, 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 highly recommend KNUS. 
of living in Ghana is quite high as compared to Cameroon. Talking about accommodation, for example, um, a hostel that you can get for 150,000 francs in a year. In Ghana, as an international student, you'll be paying $1,200. So yeah, it's, it's expensive. There are no available job opportunities for students here. But most students are self-employed. They run their private businesses. Anything that you can do to, you know, put money in the qua, in the pocket. Approximately $70 to $200 is enough to live comfortably for a month here. Now, the transportation system is quite different from Cameroon. You see, unlike in Cameroon, where you can stand on the road and break a taxi to take it to the market to wherever you're going to, here is actually different. So, on campus, we have private cabs that carry just you. Also, there are loading taxis. So, the loading taxis are like the ones we have in Cameroon. They take students from the junction to campus and from campus to the junction so for the loading taxis you just go you sit in the car and you wait until the car is full so three people behind and one person in front with the driver so usually students will go for the loading taxis because they are cheaper than the private cabs because when you're taking a private cab you're paying for all the seats let's talk about off-campus transportation so off-campus there are buses that are called Trotro, which is commonly known in Nigeria as the downfall bus. They don't work on campus. Yeah, it's really cheap. But also there are Ubers. The Ubers work on campus and off campus. So most of the time, students take Ubers when they are actually late for classes like you are hearing because on a normal day, Uber there is expensive. Finally, the question everybody wants me to answer. Are the borders open? No official statement has been released concerning the reopening of the borders. So no, the borders are not open. But like I said earlier, admissions are ongoing. Also, the school calendar for the academic year 2020-2021 has not yet been uploaded on the school website. It comes to the end of this video and I hope you find this information very useful. To conclude, if you are looking to study in Ghana, I recommend that you apply to the Kwame Kuma University of Science and Technology in Kumasi, Ghana. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Please make sure you like this video if you found it useful. Leave a comment in the comment section, okay? If there are any questions that you have, if there's anything that I didn't address, just leave your questions below and I'll be sure to reply you. I'm going to leave the various links I talked about down in my description box. Please, so, Nico, do not forget to subscribe to your baby girl's channel. I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!